and to radiate good to others. Together, Unity of Delray Beach is an expanding center of Christ's life, mighty to attract its good and to radiate good to others. I'd just like to personalize that statement. I'll make it once and then I'll ask you to join with me. I am an expanding center of Christ's light, mighty to attract my good and to radiate good to others. Together, I am an expanding center of Christ's light, mighty to attract my good and to radiate good to others. I know that to be the truth. I'm going to share with you a blessing for a church by James Dillett Freeman. We hold this to be the truth for our church. This is God's house. May we who come here not only find out about God, but find God. May there be beauty in this place, but especially may it be a place where men, women, and children become aware of the beauty in themselves. May this be a place of worship. May this be a place of instruction. May this be a place of singing. May this be a place of prayer. But for us who worship and take instruction and sing and pray, may this always be a place of inner stillness where we may listen and hear when God speaks. May whoever ministers here minister in love. May whoever teaches here teach truth. May whoever serves here serve pleasantly. May everyone come into this house in expectation and go with thanksgiving. And may anyone who comes needing help go feeling blessed. May this be such a house that Jesus Christ or any stranger would fill in it that they were with friends. And from Charles Fillmore, fill us now with richness of spirit and purpose. God bless this church with substance so that success and prosperity are the order of every day. And so it is. Our daily word for today is blessing for mothers. And the affirmation is I bless all mothers with thoughts of gratitude. There's nothing quite like a mother's love, so nurturing, <laughs> caring, and warm. Today, I bless the women in my life who express this love in all they do. Whether it's the woman who raised me or any of the other women I know who so generously shared a mother's love. I have felt the care of God through their tender touch and encouraging words. Over the years, I have grown strong and confident under their kind direction and have relied upon their wisdom. The divine feminine flourishes on earth in the loving words and caring hands of mothers and all those who share a mother's love. I bless them and pray they know the love of God as they have shared it so generously with me. And from 2 Kings 4 verse 30, then the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave without you. And that's our beautiful daily word for today. We have a few announcements this morning. One is uh, just the usual activities here at the church. So every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., there's our prayer group that meets here in the sanctuary. Uh, Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary is our meditation group. It's a wonderful way to come together and pray and meditate in a group. There is that power of coming together. Uh, so I encourage you, if you have not attended one of those um, uh, activities to uh, take advantage of them. They're here every week for you. Thursday mornings at 7 a.m. through a teleconference we have Prosperity Coffee. It's an ongoing group but you're welcome to join at any time. Uh, we study a book and then we have uh, discussions and there's information about it in the narthex um, so if you're interested in that check that out. We are still asking for uh, volunteers for our bookstore, and we're not asking for a big commitment here, maybe one service or two services a month, but we do need some uh, extra volunteers to help out in our bookstore. 
And if you'd like a monthly phone visit from one of our chaplains, you can sign up for that. Uh, you can let the church office know. You can either call them or send them an email. The email address is unitychurch at unityschool.com. And I have one other announcement, and that is uh, kind of a keep, keep the date announcement, which is June 11th. Um, Reverend Dan Holloway, who some of you know, will be speaking at both services, and then he's going to be offering a two-hour workshop that day. So Reverend Dan used to come and speak for us uh, quite often. He was the senior minister at Unity of Vero Beach, and he's now moved to St. Augustine, so he's a little bit farther away. He hasn't made the trip down here. He's a wonderful presence, um, very steeped in Unity teachings, and I would just you know, recommend that you keep that uh, workshop in mind. Uh, we haven't had a lot of workshops in the last year or so, so it's an opportunity, again, to come together and kind of under and deepen our understanding. The topic of his um, workshop is mind mapping, and it's a process that he has used over the years uh, to put together his talks and to sort of um, come up even with his book that he published. So uh, just keep that in mind. That's June 11th. And that does conclude our announcements for this morning. As always, if you ever have any questions, you can call the church office. They're always happy to help you uh, with any questions that you do have. So now I'm going to invite you to get comfortable in your seats. If you have anything in your hands, you may just set that aside. You're welcome to close your eyes. I'm going to take our statement of truth one time, and then I will ask you to join with me. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe, God the good omnipotent. Together, there, there is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe, God the good omnipotent. Just allowing that truth and the power of that statement to wash over us, permeating every cell of our being, allowing it to take hold in that inner sanctuary so that we live, move, and have our being from that deeper understanding. And with that understanding comes a confidence, a peace, a calm assurance that all is well. The divine order is in everything within us and all around us. And so we recognize that divine order. We know that there is only one presence and one power active in our lives and in the universe, God, the good, omnipotent. And so it is. And now we'll sing the Lord's Prayer in, <laughs> we'll sing the Lord's Prayer in preparation for our time of meditation.
wonderful heart energy that is represented by the spiritual mother within you. And the access to it is through your own heart space, the energy of your spiritual heart, your soul's heart. And today we're going to know that the Divine Mother is within us and the way to experience that nurturing love that is truly who we are is through our heart. And so I invite you, if you feel led to do this, to just put your hand on your heart and feel whatever energy you feel there. And taking away everything that you thought was your identity. Your name and gender, your abilities, your roles, all the things that you thought defined you. Set them aside for a moment and discover that there is only one presence and one power, and it is active in my heart, and this is who I am, and this is who everyone else is as well. My heart is the doorway, the gateway. To the unconditional, nurturing, accepting love. That some call the Divine Mother. Letting go of all else, even who we thought we were, in the heart space, there is just love. There is just the nurturing love that brings such a feeling of well-being. confidence and peace and there is none else in this oneness of love I can bring in any situation or problem or anything that has been on my mind and it finds its resolution in divine love. My heart knows no problems, no difficulties, no conflicts. And in this heart space energy, I experience the spiritual solution that is found in this nurturing oneness. Divine love. The spiritual energy, this mothering essence is who I am. And I let go lesser identities and I bring my attention and my awareness to the oneness that is here and now present. And here and now I rest in my heart and I find my
eternal space. All is well. I find my trust and my rest and the confidence to move into whatever action is needed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is.
wants to go up to Epcot, to the American Pavilion, and hear you. Yes, do Because he's singing up there. That's his day job. Yes. You know, a lot of musicians, a lot of creative people have a day job, yeah. and then they get to be creative at night, but he gets to have his day job be his night job. Yes. Yeah. And, and Sean, Sean, the prelude, it was just amazing. So, it's Mother's Day, and some people love Mother's Day, and some people don't like Mother's Day very much. I remember hearing a minister talk about this and say, you know, I'm very careful with Mother's Day because not everybody got along with their mother. <laughs> and, you know, part of, and here's the talk title, part of taking responsibility for your soul is to take responsibility for that energy within your heart that is that mother nurturing energy, which is there. It's who you are. The mother nurturing energy is the heart space. You are ultimately your own mother. And once I got that, I could let my earthly mother off the hook a bit. <laughs> and that doesn't mean that there's not struggles. I'll talk a little about some of the difficulties, but it's, it's, uh, it's important that we take responsibility for our soul, that we realize that the mothering energy within us is right here. And that everybody's mother is a pair of opposites, obviously, everybody is pairs of opposites in them, and, and, and my experience was the same. But ultimately, we, we, in every aspect of life, we don't find it out there. You can have as much money as you want to have. You can have as many relationships as you can possibly handle. Probably can't have that many. <laughs> you, you, you can have all the experiences the world can offer. You can even have all the, quote, spiritual experiences. Ultimately, it's all in here. And we, we get to the point, the point of life, the journey of life brings us to that place where we wake up to the fact that it's time to take responsibility for the soul. And in today's talk, take responsibility that you are ultimately responsible for mothering yourself. And I'm not lessening. I know there's some mother in this room saying, wait a minute. What am I, chopped liver? I worked all that time and I came here to a Mother's Day service so I can be acknowledged and we do acknowledge you and you should acknowledge yourself and we should acknowledge ourselves. But ultimately it is an inside job and, and there's a wonderful story that I remember hearing from Ernest Wilson, the Unity Minister. There's still a few of us who, who knew him and he was probably the founder of the first Unity Church. In fact, he was president of INTA in 1919. So that's how long ago he, he was around. But I met him when I was a teenager. And when I was in ministerial school, he would tell us the inside story of all the things that went on at Unity over the years. And some of it was rather juicy. And some of it was rather interesting. But one of the great stories was about Myrtle Fillmore, the mother of Unity. She and Charles Fillmore founded Unity. And Charles said repeatedly and wrote repeatedly that Myrtle Fillmore was the reason why Unity Existed because he said, I would have given it up and chucked the whole thing out, and I'm quoting him, long ago, if it wasn't for her. But the day came, in, I believe it was in 1929 or so, when she showed up and had ordered a whole bunch of roses, and somebody was with a cart and a whole bunch of vases. And she went from desk to desk at Unity headquarters, and she said goodbye. Gave them the rose and the vase, acknowledged them, gave them a hug, and said goodbye. She said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. This is my last day. And they knew from what she was saying that she didn't just mean she was retiring. She was an advanced soul, and she was in pretty good health. So people realized, and at least that was the story that and nobody's ever contradicted it. But she went from person to person and said goodbye, and people, of course, were crying, and people were saying things. And Ernest Wilson himself went up to her and said, you can't leave us, Mother Myrtle, you can't leave us. You're the mother of unity. And she said, well, in a sense, I am that. I have a role, and I've played it. 
but you're the mother of unity. Each willing heart is the mother of unity. And I will be able to help you more on the other side than I will be able to do here. And you'll find that out if you're open and receptive to it. But you are the mother of unity. That mother is within each one of you. It never, it never wasn't in you. And, and she said goodbye and she went home. She went home to her house that Charles Fillmore had built for her that her son had designed without a kitchen. Because she never, after raising uh, three, three boys, she never wanted to cook again. So she had a house without a kitchen. And she went back to that house, which is still there. It's an Airbnb, it's right on the golf course. And uh, she, she, she went back and she fell asleep two days later. And, uh, and, and when I was in my first church, I found in the back of a, I saw something in the back of a closet in my office. And it was a deep closet, so nobody had been back. And I went and pulled it out, and it was her funeral program. Wow. And I still have that. But she said goodbye by telling the truth, which is, yes, yes, she had a role. But you are the mother. You are your own mother. Ultimately, you have to take responsibility for nurturing yourself. And when you realize that, you become whole once again. You realize who you are. That energy, that mothering energy within you, is who you are if you take away all of the identities that you think you have, that your ego personality has, your affiliations, your height, your weight, your gender, your ethnicity, your abilities, all the things that you thought, the roles you played. There's something left. All of those things come and go. All the events in your life and all the accomplishments and all the things come and go. Not one of them has come and stayed. But there is only one thing that comes and stays. It doesn't even come because it's always been and it will always be. And it is the energy of your heart. It is the energy of love. And there's two things I want you to, to well, uh, leave the service with. And one is that the mothering energy is within you and is who you are. And the access, the gateway, is your heart. Your heart is the opening to the mothering energy that is who you are, that has all the love, it's unconditional, it doesn't ask anything from you. It doesn't demand anything from you. Doesn't even, it might motivate you to do something, but it's unconditional. And you say, but sometimes I don't feel it. That's the only thing that perhaps is yours that it asks, which is your attention, your awareness. And maybe putting your hand on your heart during the day and being aware of this. And you'll get answers. You'll get strong and specific guidance, and you'll know. My first heart experience was, I guess it was 1976 or so, I don't know. Uh, and I was, I dropped out of college with seven units to go, and I was working in a hardware store because I was just too spiritual. And so I was involved in this meditation, and, and I really wasn't interested in any of those things, you know. And, and uh, I had, earlier in my life, I wanted to be a unity minister, but at this point, I was even too spiritual for that. And so, I know. And so, uh, uh, I had a crisis. And it wasn't just one crisis. Every single thing in my life broke down. A good friend of mine says that the spiritual path, the great leaps in consciousness happen because of either desperation or inspiration. And inspiration is you get some wonderful spiritual experience, but desperation is frankly more often than not the one. And for me, this was part of the point of desperation. Uh, I was in a living in an apartment that was a converted house, and the two upstairs neighbors were abusing their families. They were both MPs and the Marines, and the the landlord uh, person took their side, and I was dealing with this stuff, and then my. Uh, at the store where I worked, I had 
just an incredible run of people that were just so mean and terrible and hard to deal with, and I was so sensitive, so all sensitive, and um, and, uh, and and I, I found that uh, that that my girlfriend who had gone away uh, as an exchange student for the summer for college uh, had. Um, been up to no good, and I found out about it. And so that was down the tubes. Everything seemed to go wrong, and my meditation teacher, this wonderful, she ended up going kind of off the deep end, and it, it was uh, everything in my life was gone. And so I just sat on the edge of my bed, and I just whispered the word help. And I felt something, it was a whoosh, and the energy opened up in my heart. I could feel it, it was tangible. I could feel the energy in my heart. And I heard the words from the Old Testament, behold, I give you a new heart. I take away your heart of stone, I give you a heart of flesh. And I, had, I must have heard of that somewhere, but suddenly I realized, I just knew it. It was a revelation. Remember I've talked about revelations being intuitive awarenesses that from the tip of your toes to the top of your head, you know, and it comes with everything you need. And this revelation was, if I just go to my heart, I'll know what to do. In every situation, if I just become aware of my heart, and for me, it was almost like physically aware of my heart. That was how I was approaching it. And so I'd be in the store, and people would act a certain way, and I would spontaneously, sometimes I'd walk away, sometimes I'd say something, sometimes I'd turn it into a joke, sometimes I'd, I'd take action. I, it would be different every time. But it's, see, the heart has its own intelligence because the head is the intelligence of the ego. The intellect is the intelligence of the ego, and the heart is the intelligence of the intuition of the soul. The intuition is the heart of the soul, and it dwells in your heart. So, so, so I would just know, and it, and, and I found it very interesting, and I, I found out ways to deal with the situation I'm in my dwelling place. And I, I left the meditation group, and I start started looking into my own experience and saying to myself, "Oh, well, what is it I really want to do with my life? I think I want to be a unity minister." And I enrolled back and I finished my degree and I went into ministerial school. And it was years before I uh, would have probably done it otherwise. And as far as the relationship, I broke up with it. Be but I hadn't gotten into codependency recovery, so we'll get back to it later. <laughs> so, uh, but still, I, my heart was, was telling me, showing me the way. I've shared before about how I came into this lifetime. The whole theme of this life is to open my heart. And how, now I, was, I wish I could say that that was it. One and done. Don't you love it? Don't you want to have a one and done situation? Aren't spiritual steps like it? Well, sometimes you do take the leaps in your consciousness, and I did. And that was what I got out of that was with me, has been with me ever since. But I've had other, and I've shared about the other openings up in my heart. But that was where the first time, the first time I'd ever experienced anything like that. And then years later, I found out about an organization, which I'm not endorsing because I've never gone to any other stuff called heart math where they teach that and they hook people up to e e EKGs and, and teach people how to access their heart and it's a whole scientific thing. I don't know. All I know is that I, I experienced something like that just spontaneously. And when I don't know what to do in a situation, my heart knows. Your heart will solve that unsolvable problem. You have an unsolvable problem in your life. If not now, it's going to come. It's part of life. You're going to have unsolvable problem, and your heart will solve the unsolvable problems because the problems are created in the level of the mind, of the intellect, but the heart has the answers. The heart has the answers, and the answers don't come the way Greg wants them to. The heart's answers are, I've had people say, but, but I'm going to use my prayer, and I'm going to get what I want. Well, that's your head talking. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But your heart, sometimes my heart um, tells me to accept the unacceptable because on a deeper, higher level, there's something else going on that I'm not conscious of. Other times things work out this way or that way. The heart doesn't make sense to the head. Are you, do you notice that in your life? The heart doesn't make sense to the head. The heart just, you go, 
What's that heart thinking? It just doesn't make sense. You mean to tell me that I'm supposed to, and then fill in the blanks. And sometimes that happens. Other times, it's very uh, convenient. It, you just can't, you can't tell with that heart, that mothering aspect within you. They're just like mothers. Sometimes they're this way, and sometimes they're that way. I shared about my mother, and, and I understand if people have had difficulties with their mothers, because my mother was, a, a, I was very close to her, and then just before I entered um, uh, in my teen years, my mom had a mental health crisis that caused me to have a different experience of her. And it was only when I was an adult and I recognized and became aware of the pain that I was carrying and did the psycho-spiritual work I needed to do. I say psycho-spiritual, meaning there's a psychology based in spirituality. And I did this journaling and forgiving and the, the nurturing and, and the many methods that I've shared, the seven steps and various things that, that I took responsibility for my own heart and my whole, own soul. And, and I had a, I have to say, I had a wonderful experience with my mom after that, as long as we didn't talk about politics. <laughs> Otherwise, we had a great experience, but I knew not to do that. And I, I, I had the experience of awakening to the fact that the love of God is who I am. The mothering, nurturing love of God is who I am, and it's what's within my heart. And what I found is that my heart has every answer. And again, I have to surrender. The heart surrenders. You notice that? The heart surrenders. The head demands. But the heart surrenders. When I say it surrenders, it's not being a doormat. It's not being a victim. Sometimes it means taking drastic action and even setting boundaries, which I had to do at times with my mom. And that was part of the healing. But the heart, the heart knows and the heart gives you answers where you didn't think there were any answers. I had an unsolvable problem that brought me to this church in 1989 as your minister. I had accepted a position for two years as an associate minister, and that was the agreement, during which time I was going to start my own church in something that was just starting out called Silicon Valley. And, uh, but it really wasn't anything in those days. But I was going to start a church in... in uh, and it was all arranged and everything. And then as soon as I arrived, three weeks after I got there, the city of Palo Alto approved a building project. And I was told, you can't leave this church for seven years and you're not going to start your own church. Well, I wasn't told that until about a year and a half into it. And I, I, I was young, but I wasn't that young. I wasn't going to do that. I didn't know what to do. It was an unsolvable problem because... I knew it was not going to be accepted uh, for, me to, for me to leave. And so um, I went to a minister's conference, and I went to the Peace Chapel in the Silent Unity Building. You ever, ever maybe been to the Peace Chapel? The Peace Chapel is incredible. It's where my dad's ashes are scattered. He had, it was his favorite place on earth. And I sat there, and I prayed. I, I surrendered. I said, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do in this situation. And I just had a feeling, go to the silent unity building, to the light that shines for you. Do you know up at the top there's a tower and there's a room and they say the light that shines for you and in a room in some building that's always been a light on of somebody praying 24 seven for decades and decades and decades. And so there's always somebody in there, but ministers were allowed to go in there on the half hour, but you couldn't go in the middle, you had to go right on the half hour. And you could go in and you could go too because you were a minister. Great. So I showed up. I had that feeling. So I showed up. I went up there. waited until the half hour. Went in. And there was nobody there. <laughs> the light that shines for you. And whoever it was, it was they didn't show. <laughs> but I was there. So it was covered. But I, I got to go real deep into meditation because there was nobody else in the room. It was dark. And I just, I had, what do I do? I'm here, I don't know. And I got in touch, I was in touch with my heart. And I saw the face of a guy who was in charge of um, the placement of ministers. I didn't know him at all. I don't think I'd even had a conversation with him. And I wasn't real comfortable with him. I don't know why, I just wasn't. So I would never have sought him out. But I just had a feeling, okay, I don't know what this is about. So I called him, I called him, made an appointment. And he had an opening and I went to see him. And I said, look, um, this is in confidence, but this is what's going on. Um, 
in the church that where I was serving the first year I'd spoken a bunch of times and the second year I wasn't allowed to speak on Sunday mornings I had my own service at night and there was a lot of other story to it but I shared with him what's going on and that I feel it's time for me to go and he says how how is your uh, boss going to react I said I don't know he says I've known him for 25 years and I don't either but I got to tell you something right now I just found out an hour ago that the minister of unity of Delray Beach is going to resign on Sunday but you can't tell anybody because nobody knows it. It's on Wednesday, I think. And uh, you'd be perfect there. So I want you to apply. And I went, oh, okay. And I did. And that's what got me here. Oh. And uh, it was 1989. Wow. And, um, and that was, but I, it was an unsolvable problem. There's a whole lot more to the story, but I could go on to a lot more. But the truth is that, the, that I mean, even then, it, it was no way a slam dunk. There were many other, I was told when I came here that they're, we're gonna bring you back a second time. And uh, there's still some, you know, discussion. And, and the interesting thing was that uh, I, I got in meditation so strongly, if they don't offer it to you outright, walk away. And I was like, what? <laughs> By then, I found out what my boss was gonna react, he said, Bye bye. <laughs> well, you, you, you're either in or you're out. And so if you're out, you're out. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I need a job. What am I going to do? But I had the strongest feeling. It was right back there in that anteroom, right back there. And they were, and, and I've already been told this is what's going to happen, but we're going to have our meeting and we're going to take a vote. And when they came out, they said, we're hiring you. <laughs> and you don't have to come back. And I, was like, I was a puddle. But the point is, okay, I tell you this dramatic story, and there's a whole lot more to the story, but you don't want to hear it. It's all about you and about how when there's a problem in your life that's unsolvable, the answer's in your heart, the answer's access through your heart, but it's not going to give you what you want necessarily. It might, it might not, but the heart has its own understanding, and that's the mothering nature of the heart. The mothering nature of the heart, the nurturing nature of the heart. Your heart has all the answers that you want. You say, well, how do I access my heart? Put your hand on your heart. Ask. You know, I wish I could say that uh, that experience that I had on the side of my bed when I felt this energy in my heart and I heard those words uh, in, in, in my mind, uh, behold, I give you a new heart. I wish I could say that I was just fixed and it was all better. I, I've had unfoldments since then. Because the truth is that your spiritual growth is through desperation or inspiration, and sometimes when you're going through the desperation, that unsolvable problem is exactly what you need in order to take, make a quantum leap in your spiritual development. Your spiritual development is all that counts. It didn't count, ultimately, whether I came here or not. It didn't count, ultimately, that I got what I wanted or not. What counts is that you take your spiritual step. It's called karma yoga. You dedicate your action to God and you accept the result and dedicate the result of the action to God. And you let it go. And you say, but I want what I want when I want it. <laughs> Welcome to humanity, to the human race. That's part of the ego. And if the process of unveiling your soul and taking responsibility for your soul requires that you let go of your ego and all those things, what better way than to have an unsolvable problem that requires you to surrender and say, okay, I'm, I'm in, I'm going to do this. And you don't have to do it just right. And we always think we have to do it all pretty. You don't have to be pretty on the spiritual path. A friend of mine once said, everything I let go of had claw marks on it. And <laughs> you, you got to let, let it go, let it go, let it go, and let it be and let it be and let everybody else be who they choose to be without any insistence or, or demand that they satisfy you. When you do that, the only way to live then is from your heart because it's the only constant. It's the only true thing. It's the only one thing. It's the only thing that doesn't come and go. Not, none of the things in your life has ever stayed. Nothing, you can't stay the nature of third dimension and time. Your fourth dimensional heart, which dwells in oneness beyond space and time, is the only thing you can ever ultimately count on, and then maybe you could let some other people off the hook. So let's just move into our heart space right now.
and know there is only one presence and one power, and it is that which is active in my heart. And that heart space energy is the access to my intuition, to the answers that I'm looking for, and to everything that I need in my life. And I acknowledge that throughout time, spiritual people have always talked about the heart, the great heart, the mothering aspect of God. But this is the access to divine love. Divine love. My heart space energy provides the answers that I need and I take the time to become aware. I place my awareness on my heart. I allow my awareness to rest in my heart. And if I need to do anything there, I just say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. And so it is. Amen. Amen. service where we want to bless our offerings, our gifts, our tithes. Uh, we have a number of ways of giving. You can drop your offering in the basket as you leave. You can give through a credit card at the bookstore, or we have our online app, which is called Tithely, and there's information about that in the narthex. So I'm going to take our offering blessing and the state at once, and then I will ask you to join with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. God is the source, and I am the channel. Together, divine, divine love through, through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. God is the source, and I am the channel. And so in this moment, we bless these gifts. We open our hearts with gratitude for the opportunity to give, to be an open channel of God's abundance, God's goodness in this world. And so we see each one of these gifts blessed and going forward to bless many. And then returning to the giver, pressed down and overflowing with abundance. We know that as we give, we receive. So we give willingly, lovingly, openly. We take a moment to give thanks for the many blessings in our lives. We bless our beautiful church, each person that is touched by this ministry. We bless our school, every child, family, and staff member. And we know that unity of Delray Beach is that expanding center of Christ's life. Blessing our community and blessing the world. And for that we say thank you, God. Amen. And now if you will please stand, we will sing the peace song.
chaplains at the front of the uh, sanctuary. And now we'll take our um, prayer for protection and state it together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. God bless each and every one of you. Enjoy this Mother's Day and have a beautiful week. And come back and see us. Thank you. Thank you.